I feel so crappy. I'm sure that I'm gonna sound congested. And I'm at this point I'm mostly just frustrated because I had this like lingering cold for two or three weeks and then I felt good for a week and now I'm sick again. So it's one of those things where you just get so frustrated with your body. I'm just like really? And the thing with my colds is that I've been functional, but just feeling like not a hundred percent is just so frustrating because like I can't work out and I lack motivation and then I just feel lazy and I'm just moody. I'm also having like epically bad PMS so I'm hoping that the process of doing this video will cheer me up because it usually does. Especially favorites videos because it's just a lot of positive focus. On to February favorites. I have actually like a really super balanced mix of beauty products this month and then some lifestyle things and a couple music things from much earlier in the month. I want to like start the whole video though before I get into the products with saying probably my number one favorite for the entire month has been watching Kimberly Clark's anti-haul videos. Thank you so much to everyone that recommended I watched them. I had referenced in my last Mercedes shops that I had learned about the anti-haul concept from Viviana Does Makeup, and I think she mentioned Kim Kimberly Clark too, but it meant more coming from you guys to go watch her. <laughs> Maybe that sounds bad, but it's true. If you don't know who she is, she is a drag queen who I think is now, she used to be based in New York, now I think she's in New Orleans, but she does this whole series on why she's not going to buy particular makeup items and she's so articulate, smart, very critical of capitalism and marketing and sort of this manufactured impulse for us to continue consuming products, particularly in the beauty space. And so I mentioned it in the prelude to my last video, but what that has unlocked for me, I mean, I've I'm a sociologist, I, which I have been mentioning a lot lately, but I've been critical of capitalism and accumulation and all of those things for a very long time. But suffice to say, Kimberly Clark has been pivotal for me this month. It just really struck a nerve in me. I think also because seeing someone be so authentic and honest, which is so rare, especially in the blogger world, in a way I feel like it gave me permission to be more outspoken with with things that I have sort of edited myself for. Um, so I mean, I have fallen prey to, even though I strive for authenticity and stuff, I have edited thoughts and criticisms and things like that because eco beauty is slightly different than conventional beauty too because it's a little bit more personal. The brands tend to be very small. Everybody knows each other. For me, it's more that. It's not that I care really about burning bridges with brands. If someone's really offended by a critical analysis I have of their products, then that's their prerogative, but I'm not counting on people to send me free products. I'm not a professional blogger, and I feel like that's one of the really big benefits to not being a professional blogger, is you're not beholden to having a surface relationship with a lot of brands for the sake of a partnership or getting sent products for free or even doing sponsored posts or things like that. So that's never been my concern. It's more that because the companies are smaller, you know, that is someone's hard work and dedication and things like that. And so I don't, I never want to come off rude and like slamming products. And so far I do think I've done, I guess, a decent job on my channel of being honest in a respectful way. And I will continue to be so, but I think I'm just, I don't, I'm like chomping at the bit now to be more critical. And I think the moment is so ripe for it, uh, given that May Lindstrom raised her prices like 15 to 30%, depending on where in the world you are, and not to single out her as a brand, but it is emblematic of a pocket of the eco-beauty space that I think would behoove us all to sort of critically look at. So that has been kind of my overarching favorite of the month is this concept of the Auntie Hall and Kimberly Clark's analysis and kind of my reframed thinking around all of this stuff. That is not to say that my desire for beauty and beautiful products and self-care as realized through carefully curated eco-beauty routine is going anywhere. It's really about a balance and I think 
I mean, what I want to do is share on my channel sort of my personal process with all of that and how I balance these things and how it's a really iterative, self-reflective process. I mean, we all sort of live in contradiction and think one thing at a certain point of time and then we gather new information or have new life experiences and that reframes how we conceive of these things and that's kind of life in general. We are always in a state of flux and learning and self-reevaluation, at least some of us are. And yeah, I'm blabbing incessantly about this at this point. So more to come if you would be interested in a video where I talk even more about these themes. So now on to the beauty product talk. So I have everything grouped. I have something from like every category this month, skincare, body care, hair, makeup, nails. Um, and I wanted to kind of go in order, but I want to tell you, I think my number one favorite from the entire month. It's a product from Stark, but really Stark Skincare's relaunch has probably been my favorite beauty discovery this month. I am friends with the owner of Stark, Jess Lafleur, and she sent me a beautiful PR package of all of her relaunched products. I had tried several of them before she relaunched them. I mean, so many of the products have been favorites, but the one I want to highlight this month and save the rest of my thoughts for a full Stark review is the Tendril Hair Oil. I have now used this four or five times in several different ways, and I can say without a doubt that it has given me like guaranteed good hair. I like it as a pre-shampoo scalp treatment. I like it as a few drops on my fingers run through my ends before styling. And for me, it has replaced a product that I needed a replacement for, the Yurok Feature Shine Drops. I liked doing these on the ends of my hair before heat styling or as a post-styling kind of frizz tamer, but I won't be buying Yurok products anymore because I'm pretty sure that they are Trump administration supporters. They had posted a picture of Melania during the inauguration and I was like, I am all set. Another brand, in case you are someone that cares to vote with your dollars, Agent Natur, the person behind that, seems to have politics that I don't personally agree with. So those are the two brands in the eco-beauty space that I will not be buying from anymore. But yeah, I just thought I would put that information out there if you are like-minded in that way. But I really like, this has been like my favorite product all month, the Stark Tendril Hair Oil. I don't even have like any information on me about what's in here or whatever. I've been so busy the last month and I've been testing a lot of new stuff. I have this bad habit of just diving into products before reading about them or seeing what's in them, which is like something I need to work on to be honest. But uh, I guess I'll go more into um, ingredients and the particular composition of this and all the Stark products in that video. But suffice to say, love, 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 love. Another thing I love about Stark also figures into all of this reflection and stuff I've been doing this month, which is Stark is a very moderately priced brand and she, in the process of her reformulation, she actually lowered her prices because she has a very different business model than a lot of other eco-beauty brands. If you'd like to hear more about that, she did start a YouTube channel where she's explaining both how to use the products and then she also did a video that I thought was fantastic on how she was able to actually lower her prices. So it sounds like I'm like a Stark mega fan, which I am, but I just, I want to highlight that there are companies out there that are attuned to these issues of runaway eco beauty prices and still providing extremely high quality products at an affordable price point without sacrificing quality and kind of a, a really beautiful, product experience. My favorite skincare product all month was absolutely the Tata Harper Rejuvenating Serum. I was also sent this as PR, just FYI, but it's something I will happily repurchase again. It's probably my, mm, tied with the moisturizing mask for my favorite Tata Harper product that I've tried. I have been using this AM and in rotation in the PM, but it's like a perfect AM serum step, which I didn't really have. I was using a hyaluronic product in the morning. This, you don't even need a hyaluronic product like Provise or the Activist Hyaluronic Acid Serums. I'll, I'll alternate those if my skin is very parched, but after the Infury Facial that I had, this has just kind of been all that I've needed. So my morning skincare routine has been toner, eye product, this, a drop of an oil, and then my other skincare favorite this month has been the Josh Rosebrook Nutrient Day Cream. I should also say that if you've watched like my last several videos, a lot of what I'm going to talk about is probably not going to be super surprising because 
think I've mentioned most of this stuff. It's a lot of new stuff, but they've been favorites this month, what can I say? This is amazing. I like it a bit better than the Untinted Suntegrity. It is a perfect, perfect base for the new foundation in my life, the Josie Marin Vibrancy Foundation, which has been another favorite. I never honestly thought I would see the day when I would be a liquid foundation convert, and this is the first one to date that I have purchased a full size of and have been getting daily use out of and really enjoying. I use a very small amount. I probably use like a third of a pump. Just put that third of a pump on my fingers and I kind of first distribute it around this area and my chin and then I blend that in with a beauty blender. And that's really kind of all I personally need as far as coverage. It's like a kicked up version of a tinted moisturizer, it just gives that next step of coverage. So I would consider it a medium coverage, dewy, skin-like foundation that's buildable. I think with building it does look a little bit more makeup-y, but that could just be me because every foundation generally will start to look makeup-y on me. But used discreetly, this has been amazing and it's been a great investment. I'm super, super happy with it. If you care, I am in the shade Euphoric RG20. I do dislike the packaging, I will be honest, it's not particularly chic or elegant, but I overlook it because the product is so outstanding. Um, I guess should we talk about the rest of my makeup favorites? I I feel like I used all these things in my last Maquillage and Musings video, this seems like very redundant, doesn't it? But the shadow up here, Red Apple Lipstick Vamp eyeshadow has been a huge favorite this month. I've been wearing it on my lower lash line, applied with a Wayne Goss 05 brush. I think it has enough like purple coolness in it to work on me. I love mixing it with a dark brown like this one from the Jane Iredale Daytime Smoky eyeshadow kit. Those mixed together, smudged out on my lower lash line, I've really been enjoying all month. K.R. Weiss Abundance Cream Blush. Loving. It's so pigmented, super blendable, long lasting. Topped with my Hourglass Ambient Mood Light powder. Obsessed. I'm wearing it today. I feel like it's such a beautiful combination. I had been feeling like my makeup needed a bit of like a refresh, I guess. I had been doing just like a lot of cream bronzer, which I still like, but I just wanted something different and more cool toned on the cheeks. And this combination just really delivers for me. So not inexpensive, but things that I think I will get a ton of use out of. And then my other favorite this month is of course the Tata Harper Illuminator. Uh, cream highlighter. It's just been super beautiful. I don't feel the need to repurchase the RMS Living Luminizer anytime soon. Just been getting tons of use out of this. It's really natural. I feel like it just looks like an inner glow. However, I'm almost positive I'm going to return the contour bronze to Sephora. It's just not unique enough or pigmented enough for me to keep it. It's Honestly, it's too similar to the Well People Bio Bronzer on me, but it's less saturated and pigmented. To me, the bronzer is not worth it for the price. So these aren't cheap. They're like in the $40 range, but I do think that the highlighter is a worthy splurge, whereas I don't, on me, the contour bronze is not. The two lip products I have been wearing all month are in the same color family, but they are different formulas. So Bite Beauty Aubergine, which I also used in my Maquillage and Musings video. This is the Bite Matte Lip Crayon Formula. And then my other favorite has been the Rodan Billy on the Bike Lipstick. So they're, they're super similar, but the effect that they give is very different on the lips. I'll do quick swatches. So there is Bite Aubergine. So I go for this if I want a really in-your-face, opaque, bold. This works extremely well on my undertones, I feel, but it pulls quite cool and purpley on me. On some people, I feel like it leans more Bordeaux, but on me, it leans quite, yeah, vampy purple. And then Billy on the Bike is a little bit lighter, and to be honest, the Rodin lipstick formula is probably the most unique lipstick formula I've ever used. I, I am wearing it today. The best way I can describe this to you is it is like putting a watercolor on your lips. It gives, at least this one, I don't know 
there's I think five colors in the range and I don't know if the formula is consistent across colors when I've seen other people wear them they look a little bit more opaque on other people than they than it seems to show up on me if I want not such an in-your-face bold something that's a little bit more stain like and slightly more subtle I'll go for Billy on the bike. So I would actually really recommend this color and formula if the other colors are similar to people that want to kind of ease into wearing a bold lip because I don't feel that they're so like opaque and full coverage. It's more just like a beautiful wash of bold on the lips. They fade beautifully. It's a super lightweight, moisturizing, comfortable formula. I wouldn't say it's like an all time like favorite formula. It's super unique though, and that's what I like about it. Um, and I mean, it is a favorite formula. I just, I think my core soul will always be for like a full coverage, super matte, bold, red, deep red. But yeah, it's just really, an interesting unique formula that I recommend. My nail favorite for the month is the Isla Better Than Gel Top Coat. This is an 8 free formula and I definitely have mentioned it in video before and it is epic. I now have done two manicures or three manicures with it. I think that it performs just as well as my Shiswai Top Coat in terms of preventing chipping. I get a week to a week and a half of wear out of my at-home manicures. Um, it dries very quickly. I actually think that it's slightly <clears throat> better than my Shiswai Top Coat in terms of quick dry. So within 15 minutes, I'm able to go about like everything without my nails getting ruined in any way. Rave. Three quick body care products, two scrubs I wanted to mention. The Red Flower has definitely been a favorite. And then I'm almost done with this little traveler size sample of the Therapy Awaken Skin Scrub. I've just really been enjoying having high quality scrubs in my shower the only downside is that this one in particular is so messy i know that that's just like part and parcel of body scrubs but yeah they just they definitely make your shower very messy this one feels very like polishing to the skin i feel like it definitely eradicates dry skin patches on my body and the therapy bath scrub feels a little bit more therapeutic i guess it feels like a, it penetrates the skin a little bit more and kind of has a bit more of sort of um a lymphatic movement effect. I, it's been a while since I've mentioned this product. It's the Eco Tan Invisible Tan. I'm almost out of this one. I will be purchasing another one. The reason I'm mentioning it in this video is that I'm at my height of paleness and I was at the gym one day and I looked down and I was like, oh my God, my legs. Like I was so like, I need some color. So I've been doing this like every couple weeks and it just makes me feel honestly like a little bit better about myself. I know that might sound sort of vain or whatever, but it just feels nice to have a little bit of color to your body. So I'll only use this on my legs. I really, really like it. As far as eco self tanners, I think this is a good one. It's an Australian company. It does have a bit of that sort of biscuity self tanner smell, but I can overlook it. I think it gives a very natural looking tan. And I have started a list in my bullet journal on planning spring summer purchases from sort of like a capsule perspective and a repurchase of this is on that list. And yes, I think I'm going to do a video on my spring summer capsule beauty and clothing shopping list. That's it for beauty products. Let's whiz through some lifestyle things. I have a new snack to alert you guys to. These are the Kits Organic fruit and nut bars, and I have them in dark chocolate almond coconut. These are medical intuitive approved, at least for me. They're super delicious, and another reason I like them is that they're more affordable than the other sort of on-the-go snacks that I rely on, like macro bars and grass-fed beef jerky bars. Those are more like $3 a bar, and th this whole box of 12 was only $18, so they're more affordable and they're really delicious, but they actually remind me of are Lara bars. I haven't had a Lara bar in a long time. I used to rely on them a lot. They have always made me feel kind of ill and I'm not really sure why. I'm not sure if they're organic, if it's an organic issue or that I was just consuming nuts that were not good for me, like walnuts and cashews. So these are just almonds are the only nuts in these. Everything is organic in these and it's organic dates, almonds, unsweetened dark chocolate, coconut, virgin coconut oil, and sea salt. 
so it's a really great mix of ingredients I don't feel that same sort of like pit in my stomach feeling that I would always get after eating Lara bars so if you're looking for an alternative to those if you've ever experienced that these are excellent have to give a massive shout out to my house of intuition ritual candle I technically burned this in January I did the whole sort of like ritual around the new moon in Aquarius that happened at the end of January but I think it's a February favorite because I really sort of experienced the energy during the month of February I think I should do like a whole video on like how how I use ritual candles around particular astrological events that's how I kind of like to time it I'm going to be ordering more of these from House of Intuition so I'm gonna put that on my list of videos to film if you would be interested of course but I also have really been enjoying the two crystals that were at the bottom of this that once I burned it all the way down I was left with these two beautiful crystals I don't actually know what they are when I do a close-up if anyone can identify what these are I would be most appreciative ideally you are supposed to let these burn all the way down which would take four or five days I did have to snuff mine out and relight it twice but I left it burning for about three solid days within the first hour of it being burnt when I came back into my home I could feel a shift it was really incredible to experience so I can't wait to um, incorporate more of these into my occult practices uh, a couple of media favorites Kimberly Clark anti hauls of course I don't need to belabor that anymore that was like my epic favorite this month I saw moonlight which I talked about in my last Maquillage and Musings video and that was a huge favorite. It was just such a good, thought-provoking, deeply heartbreaking movie and I, I really enjoyed it and what it ignited in me. I've been really into podcasts as well and I was like a self-proclaimed podcast eye roller. I never really understood them, but now I'm really, really into them. So my favorite from this month has been the New York Times Daily podcast. I listen to it every morning on my commute and I feel like it just kind of gets me going for the day. And I'm a huge New York Times fan. I think they just do such exceptional journalism. And then I'm about to start Crime Town, which came highly recommended from my friend Chuck. It's all about the Providence mob. I lived in Providence for six years. It's a city I know quite well. And obviously they have very, very deep roots to organized crime. I'm also listening to the Missing Richard Simmons podcast, which is just... I mean, poor Richard Simmons, right? It's sad. My music favorites for the month, I believe I have mentioned before, and there hasn't been anything else during February, but actually it's also available on the podcast store, one of them. DJ Lene Denise does a music podcast. She is a scholar DJ and does very, very thoughtful mixes around themes of justice, social equality, feminism, race and ethnic oppression and equality and things like that. So I highly recommend, that was a recommendation from my friend Mako, who is part of the community here. A mix from a Romanian DJ, I really like Melody, had posted an hour and a half set of his from a place called Club Eden in Bucharest and it was incredible. In particular, there's one track that I am dying to buy on vinyl because I can't get it digitally. It's a J Tripwire remix. And I'm so obsessed with it. So I will link that mix down below. It's a very like energizing, driving mix in a lot of ways. So if you're looking to just kind of like get your day going or some afternoon inspiration, I think it's a great mix to put on. Oh, I did it. I still feel like super congested and I have a headache. I really hope you enjoyed hearing about my favorites. Please share in the comments what you have been loving all month. I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Thank you for being super amazing. One of my favorite things to do is to read through the comments that you leave on my videos. I'm sure every YouTuber says this, but I truly feel like I have the most incredible, thoughtful, articulate, resonant people that are here at La Morée La Musique, and I'm just so, so appreciative and thankful for you. So thank you for being amazing. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos, and I'll see you in my next one soon. Bye.